Well, as soon as I got my video out today, I had nothing but computer problems. So I've been spending a few hours trying to figure that out. But, <laughs> you know, uh, I, don't, I don't talk computer language very well. So, you know, if you're an intelligent person, well versed in these things, then I could probably figure it out, but uh, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so, it's doing its thing. I've got to keep one eye on it, though, in case it tells me to do something. Okay, so I'm going to consider this done. As usual, if there's anything that bothers me, it's going to, it's going to go upstairs now and dry, and if there's anything that bothers me over the next few days, I may, I may put, you know, just touch it here and there. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with it now. Um, I'm actually, I'm very happy with it. Uh, you know, this really brought everything together. You know, uh, that empty space is gone. The structure of the trees is good. I'm happy with them. Um, what have I done here? Uh, I, I'm just going to go through it very slowly. This guy, I think I mentioned in the video, I, I was very tempted to bring some of this light back into this guy because I kind of like the swooping <coughs> feel. Excuse me. <coughs> Once I had these in place, I don't think it's necessary. I like it how it is. I was tempted to leave this tree of, these, of this group of three, leave it dark so it wasn't so important. But I've never been a fan of two trees. I'm okay with one. I'm okay with three. But just two? Eh, I like, you know, if they're going to be sort of similar in size and shape, I'll go with the odd number. So, rather than keep this dark and let it blend more into the background, I decided to include it in this group. I was worried about this indicated line going off in this direction. No longer. Now that we have light on these trees, they're not such a strong barrier. They're, they don't jump out at you anymore. Now they fit in with the scene. Catching light as, you know, as I hope they would, and they do. I like them. Um, other than that, what have I done? I know I talked about possibly indicating the odd trunk in the background. It doesn't need it. I think it's just going to be a distraction. Excuse me, one minute. My computer's telling me to do something. No, it's just telling me it's protected. Okay, that's fine. So, um, these rocks here in the foreground, I thought that, you know, this was all kind of the same value and same color. I decided to bring a pillar down a little, a little more light, a little warmer. Um, to set, you know, to, to help join the rock, bring it down to the water. I lighten this a little bit. I have a light stroke across here. Not too light, just a bit. Um, this little stroke, I brought this up, although it's colder, it's up to the same value as this warm light is here. So that helps us to sort of, you know, help to, helps the light to kind of spill off and off to the right, spill down and off to the right. Also, as you can see, I put a band of, of slightly lower value, but very close to this value. Down here, I have brought it across a little further, again, to give you that feel of it you know, coming down and to the right. I had a fairly light slice here, um, but I wanted to move it to the left because it was just too centered. I've already really kind of broken the rules when it comes to composition by having my focal area almost dead center, you know? Well, okay, it's arguably dead center. I wouldn't say it is, but arguably it is. And what's a focal point? Ask 10 different people, and they're gonna give you probably five different answers. So, I'm gonna say that I'm, I'm very happy with this. This, in general, you know, this is dead center, right? This is the highest chroma, really. It stands out the most, at least, against the dark here. Highest chroma, highest value. Boy, we're close to the middle. Bad idea. But that's breaking the rules. But if you break the rules and get away with it, that makes it an even better painting, in my own opinion. It makes it more fun. Also, because we have, because this is our mass, right? This is our, 
This is our, our strength in the painting. This is our area of interest. Focal, focal point might be here. Area of interest is really here. So it pulls the whole thing to the left. Subconsciously, that's what the viewer will see. They will be looking here. They're not going to dwell on this area. This is supportive. Um, supportive to this. So, you know, I like how that's turned out. I'm very happy with it. This was kind of, this, I brought this purple across here. You know, it was just kind of nondescript and uninteresting, too much of it. So I dragged some of these colors, a little bit darker, a little bit greener, a little bit dirtier, muddier, brought them to the left. You know, not, not a very dramatic change in color or value, but enough to support things in general. You know, again, this is stepped down, but very gently, very loosely stepped down. Um, mentioned in the last video that, you know, I was using these lines before. I'm still, I've still used the lines. It's just that I've stepped them, you know? Zigzag, not zigzag, but just sort of slowly stepped them down to the left. Needed a signature. It's got that. I sit in front of it and I think, oh, I could maybe do this. I could maybe do that. We have a rock back here that's in the shade. This silly little thing. I was so tempted to um, shine some light back here to help bring this up a little bit again. Or maybe make it more interesting. Excuse me, I have to do something here. On my computer, all i got to do is move the mouse around so it doesn't go to sleep. If this old computer I have in my studio goes to sleep, it takes half an hour to wake it up again. Um, no, I forget what I was saying. Never get old. What the heck was I saying? Anyway, yeah. So it sort of spreads it around, you know? It's, it's yeah, okay, focal point, but an area of interest. Right? And then the light spills down and it carries us off the painting. It lets our eye out of the painting a little bit. Not that it's needed, but in this case that's been the case. You know, I could have I could have put a boulder in here, you know, some big strong form in the foreground. And I do that very often. This painting I decided not to. Can't tell you why. It's just that I like to have a variety of subjects on different paintings. I don't want to it becomes very formulaic if you always rely on the easy way out. It's, it's fun to challenge myself. I, I like doing that, and, and that's kind of why, why it worked out this way. Um, I have... Oh, since the, since the... I think I just painted this tree and part of this one in uh, earlier today. This is very dark, and I felt it needed breaking up, so I took, you know, some of these, some of these branches. I laid a little bit more light in some areas. It was very, the dark area here was very, it was very flat and it needed to be a little more sculpted like that. Oh yeah, this rock. Um, was tempted to put some light on there. Decided not to. Doesn't need it. It's, it's a point in the painting way off to the left. Close to the edge. Unimportant. But at the same time, I'm sure that somebody will, as people will do, you know, you look at this, this is a painting you look at from probably, what, five to ten feet away. But then, if you like it and you're interested, you'll, you'll, zoom, you'll, you'll, you'll walk a little closer and you'll have a look. And then you'll say things like, oh, oh yeah, look at that, there's even a bit of a rock, you know, showing here. That's kind of interesting. It, it just adds a little bit of what? Uh, a little interest. Well, a little bit of sophisticate to the painting. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But I like it. They're minor things that people don't notice right away. It's easy to come up with a very dramatic and strong uh, statement in your painting to begin with. But you, I think it's kind of important to also imbue the, 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 the scene with small things that are toned down that, that the viewer will not notice immediately. But add a richness, a general richness to the painting. And that is what I think helps to extend uh, um, the affair, the affair between the viewer and the painter. If painting is a language, language is beautiful. It has all kinds of subtext. It has all kinds of implications, connotations. You know, 
those are the kind of things you can you can look at these as, as being visual connotations. Um, okay, I'm getting silly now. I guess that's it. What I'll do is uh, we'll uh, we'll do the zoom in and uh, look around at the painting close up. <clears throat> Mr. Coffee, just call me Mr. Coffee. All right. Excuse the clicking and clacking as usual, but I'm going to zoom in. We will start from the top. I think I've already kind of done this across the sky. It's fairly, you know, it's not a really strong sky. But there's quite a bit in it, actually. It's, it's, it's a fair bit of subtle color. And, yeah, when you use a knife, you could say you're painting impasto. And some painters you do paint, like they, they lay that stuff on thick. And I don't typically. I, I you know, when I paint with a knife, it's, it's much thicker than, than, uh, than with a brush, but it still isn't really thick. I, I like to allow a lot of the of the of the underpainting to show through. See, like there's a bit of a form there too. Some kind of odd street uh, tree structure maybe. I'm not sure if you could call it that, but oh my goodness, I'm just jumping all over the place here. See that branch? A lot of intensity there, but I don't know. I kind of... Sorry, guys. I've got to switch hands here because I've got to get more steady. It's burnt sienna and white. You see one branch catching the light. The branch behind it is in the shade. We'll go up our tree here. Really jumpy with my fingers here. Okay, you can see what's going on there. Okay, that gives you the idea anyway. Some rock in the shade, some in the light, some a gentle graduation from light to shade, some a stark harsh line. distant rocks, you can see there's still some color in them. Keeping the values low, keeping the, the values neighborly to each other in those distant rocks, and then, you know, the values are, are much more dramatically different in the foreground. One line is a smear, horizontal. The next line below it are a bunch, a series of vertical strokes. Variety, man. Without variety, we have a lot of boredom going on. And the water, too. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Variety of color, variety of value, variety of shape. Okay, that might be the jerkiest video I've ever done. Me. 
Okay, guys, that's it. Um, I have this one and three other recent ones that are going into a winter show. They're going to be available for sale at uh, a place called White Rock Gallery in the town of White Rock, British Columbia, Canada. I've heard there's some interest for one of the other ones and one of you guys had, had been asking if this would be available for sale too once it was finished. My reply was, if it turns out, yes it will be. And I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, that's that's just called not not the White Rock Gallery, just White Rock Gallery. You can Google, you can Google that name, and and uh, in 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 the in the town of White Rock, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, they have a website on there. They'll have they'll have uh, their Gmail address, their email address, their phone number. Uh, and what have you. I think the winter, it's it's for a winter show and I think that's going to be, I was going to double check but my computer isn't working. Uh, I think that's going to be in, a month, in about a month or so. I know that the these guys who own the gallery, they make work available for pre-sale, or they have in the past anyways, so um, there's that. If you have any other questions, just, just uh, leave me in the comments. I think that's all. I don't think I missed anything. What's happening next? Well, I need to get more paint. That's the last bit of white that I have. Is it a 200 mil tube? I had to, it's been sitting here for so long. I have the tendency of, of, of before a tube is finished, like I'll buy a bunch of tubes and then before one's completely finished, it's easier to grab a fresh one and then squeeze out, you know, and what have you. So this thing's been sitting around for, probably for two years, so so long that the cap wouldn't come off. It was easier to actually just to cut this thing off with a pair of tin snips and then dig the oil and dig the white paint out from the underside. So that's what I'm doing. So yes, I need to buy more paint. I also need to buy another canvas or a few canvases. But I think I think next I'm going to go to maybe another 2436. I should be quiet because that means nothing. When I get to the art store, I'll decide. Hope you have a good weekend. I think it's Friday today. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.